everyone, welcome back to another episode of Leighton Brothers Mystery Room! Thanks for tuning in. We are about to interview our prime suspect Reno in the second case, the stunning Goldie Patsby Man or something like that. So let's go ahead and let her on in. Let's go! Hello there, welcome! Oh my god! <laughs> This game is a lot saucier than I was expecting! Yo, you just got a full-on fetish play right on full display! I was not prepared for this, I did not ask for this, I did not... I did not want to be privy to the knowledge of this! If you want, if you got some interest, 100% A-OK, -okay, please don't just flaunt that on full display when we are suspecting you of a crime! My goodness, woman! Calm yourself! My god, okay, well... Hello, fine liony gentlemen. I hope you're doing well today. You're not looking quite pleased, and I wouldn't certainly wouldn't be in your situation. But who knows? No, no if you're the willing partner, you know, you, you, maybe you, you're probably enjoying it. You're probably enjoying it. Anyway. <sighs> moving on. Moving on. Now, were you the gentleman? Uh, gentle gentleman. Okay. Gentleman who requests. Oh! Okay! I think, okay, her accent seems to be. Now, were you the gentleman who requested my presence here? I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll adjust. We'll adjust as it goes on. What the? Miss Goldie Potsbyman, I'm not even blinking an eye at this. I see freakier things all day, okay? Hi, sorry. I know the episode literally just started, but I got interrupted, so... Anyways, it's a new session. Let's continue. That is my name. A pleasure to meet you, I'm sure. And, uh, who's this fellow with you? Is it some sort of partner in, in some very suspicious manner? Well, I... Well, I would have thought that was perfectly plain. Being here is my new man. Oh, that was really fast. Like, literally, your husband's murder case is being investigated and you are the number one suspect. And you've already got a new guy. I feel like you paid for this one. Look at him. Look at this. That or he paid for it. That or he paid for the experience. Holy cow, so she's stone cold. Like, she does not even care. Literally, her husband is dead and they are investigating her right now. That's... That is bold. Honestly, that is bold. <laughs> You've got a new fellow? Already? But your husband's barely cold! Husband? Oh yes, I did have a husband, that's right. Okay, so she's looking like a billion percent suspicious, like they've made her cartoonishly evil and and very forward. Like she's not even trying to hide that she's not sad over the death of her husband, so I'm thinking they're probably going to turn it around on us somehow, but I don't know how at this point. So even if she isn't the criminal, she sucks and she's really horrible, so you know there's that. Oh, talk about unfeeling. And what's that you've got around your fellow's neck? A collar? Isn't it swell? I chose it myself. <laughs> Does he speak? Did you did you pick a, a is he hybrid human? He doesn't look completely human. He looks very lion-like. Unbelievable. You can't do that. Well, I do declare, the police interfering in a young lady's private affairs of the heart. No, that's not what I meant at all. I will... Miss Potsbymon, we fully respect your privacy, and your relationship with this man is not our concern. It sort of becomes our concern when you put it on full display like that and don't keep it to your private, you know, spaces, but what, whatever, I, so, I suppose. However, I wonder if we might ask your friend to leave us alone while we discuss the case? Bing is my best friend, Inspector. We have no secrets between us. If I say stay, he stays. Literally, it's like a little pet. It's real fun. I'm afraid I cannot allow information about the case to be revealed to a third party. Please, if you wouldn't mind. Hmm. Oh, very well. Bingo! Home, boy! Go wait for me under the porch! Okay, wait, wait, I'm just... Y'all! They are just going 1,000% with this relationship! I can't handle this right now! What is this? Oh my god, I'm so flabbergasted. <laughs> so like... 
maybe it's part of their contract. Which, whoever initiated it, I guess, you know, it's a mutual, it's a mutual contract, so somebody within the contract wanted this man to just not speak human words. This is great. Now, boy! <laughs> this is so weird. I'm so uncomfortable right now. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. Oh my god, I was getting so uncomfortable. Now, allow me to introduce myself, if a little late. I'm Inspector Layton. And I'm Lacey. Lacey. I was gonna say Lacey Booker. <laughs> I'm Lucy Baker, the pros assistant. And what is the what is it that you want with little old me? I already gave the nice gentleman my statement. Why, everybody knows it was that no good outlaw who committed this heinous crime. Indeed, as likely as that may seem, there are a number of issues we still need to clear up. Oh really, Inspector? Yes, well, two issues to be precise. Firstly, the exact circumstances of the victim's death. We need to establish whether or not he was really killed by an intruder. I have already told you I saw the intruder with my own eyes! Secondly, there's the intruder's point of entry. Exactly how did the crip- I can't speak today. Exactly how did the culprit enter the flat? What, through the window, of course? You only need- you only- You need only look at the scene to know it. Have you even read my statement, Inspector? Naturally, I have read all the witness statements. It's our job to iron out all these little details one by one, you see. I hope you won't mind helping us. It would be my pleasure if it helps to bring that murdering outlaw to justice. Good. So, Lucy, shall we begin our investigation? Hi, let's get stuck in, Prof! Okay, yeah, so she's obviously, like, being framed as this really heartless, evil person, so it's gotta not be her, right? Because if it is, if it is her, maybe they're gonna do some, like, really layered motive or something. I don't know. So, these are, these are the issues we still need to clear up about the case, are they? Yes, if we can solve these little riddles, it will lead us to the truth about what happened. Why, they're both as plain as day! Perhaps, but we still need to confirm they're as clear-cut as they seem. Lucy, where do you want to start? Let's see now. Hmm... I want to start with the nature of attack. We can't make- we can't make any useful deductions until we've established exactly how the victim was killed. We should start by examining the body. Right you are! <laughs> Let's do it. I like how we're investigating the case while the witness is here. You would think we'd have investigated all these various matters beforehand, but I, I suppose it's because we're trying to get her input on these specific things. Still, you know what I mean? I feel like it should be separate. I feel like we should only be talking to the witness about things they witnessed rather than like, so witness, how do you think the victim was killed? Like, I, I don't know, seems, seems like it should be separated. So let's explore the scene of the crime. If anything jogs your memory, Miss Potsbimon, do tell us. I'm sure I don't see the point of all this carry-on when I already have told you who the criminal is. I'm afraid this is just the procedure we always follow, so if you wouldn't mind playing along. All right, Lucy, let's get started. Ah, right, let's see if we can't find some- Can't find some of the killer left behind by mistake. Are you sure that this little spring chicken is up to the task, Inspector? She seems mighty inexperienced. Whatever would a poor, defenseless young widow like me do if she was falsely accused by a rookie? Oh, please! There's no need for concern. I shall be keeping a close eye to make sure everything is done in the proper way. Jeez. Jeez, lady. Okay, so we're looking at the body. Hello there. Let's take a close zoom in uh, to that butt. That's where they put the little point, right on that little butt right there. The victim's dead body. He was fatally stabbed in the back. No other signs of external injury are in evidence. Right, I think you've established the cause of death now, haven't you? Ah, he was fatally stabbed. Yet, Nyx wasn't found carrying a likely murder weapon, so... So it must have been disposed of somewhere in the room! Well, I do declare, that murdering thief just cast aside his deadly weapon right here in my home? And, and, I, and am I to understand that you have no idea what the murder weapon even is? Do you quite know what you were doing, Inspector? That's what I was saying. We should have gotten this all ironed out before we talked to the witness. We shouldn't be investigating as we're talking to them. That makes us look incompetent. She has a point here, as much as I hate to admit it. 
Please be patient. Lucy, we need to locate the murder weapon. I'll track it down, Prof. Don't you worry. I do believe you two need a help in hand. The thief fled over the balcony. Maybe look there. That's where I left the murder weapon, so maybe look there. <laughs> okay, good. Great. So we're looking at the balcony. Uh, How do I do it again? Oops. No, that's not the, the... I mean, it could be a piece of glass, I guess. Like, it could be a piece of glass. But she told me to look at the balcony, so I'm probably gonna do that. I Sorry, I forgot how to move. I forgot how to do anything. <laughs> uh, How do I go outside? Is this how I go outside? There we go, there we go, there we go. So, bloodstained towel. This is just the balcony itself. The balcony itself is the murder weapon! It's cold, hard concrete is so painful. Uh, So, this... I mean, it's... It could, it could be some convoluted thing, like when you when you have ice and it's all sharpened and then it melts so that there's no nothing left behind. But like the the towel itself is not clue. There wasn't a there wasn't a blood stained um piece of glass that I saw. Sorry, yeah, I, I have to refresh my memory a little bit, so don't mind me. But there there isn't like blood stained pieces of glass. There is glass on top. So after after the victim was killed then somebody broke in. So I think that's probably gonna come into play. Um, so it wasn't that somebody broke in and killed him, it was after he was killed, then somebody broke in. All I, if she's, if she's giving us the hint of the balcony, I would assume, like what was the towel? I don't know, I'm gonna try it. I'm just gonna try it. This is the weapon. Let's just see what happens. Now, honey, you surely cannot stab somebody with such a curious item. You do know that, right? <laughs> oh, I just slipped up, that's all. Okay, so it, yeah, she told us to look here, but I mean, she's probably trying to throw us off. Would it be a piece of glass? Like, broken glass from it is scattered on the floor inside. It was unlocked and all the fingerprints have been wiped off. Okay, I gotta look somewhere else. Th why did she tell us that? Specifically to throw us off or... Um, oh my god, I wish I remembered what we found um, during the investigation. I feel like... I feel like nothing particularly stood out to me. Like, here are the knives and stuff, but they were, like, untouched, I think. Set of three knives... Like, should I say that? Because they were untouched. These are, like, completely untouched. Let me, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna- I'm just gonna do things. There's some kitchen knives here, Prof. Could be the job. That would be consistent with the long, thin blade that Forensics tells us the victim was stabbed with. Ah, oh, he was skewered with one of these, all right. Right in the middle of his back. Sadly, not. It's not the weapon we're looking for. Uh, oh? Why not? An officer already found those knives, and Forensics has examined them for traces of blood. None was found. Yeah, it didn't- it said it was clean, so... In fact, they look almost brand new. I'd say the inhabitants of this flat rarely cooked. <laughs> now, Inspector, whether we cook for ourselves or not is surely none of your business! Oh, pity I thought I were on to summit with that. I'm beginning to feel like... Pfft, I keep switching accents, so it's really hard for me. I'm beginning to feel like you will never find the murder weapon at all. <laughs> On the contrary, we will most certainly find it, Lucy. Uh, we will most certainly find it. Lucy, let's keep looking. I, I have a feeling it has something to do with those like really weird items in the bathroom. Um, Where was the bathroom again? Let's take a look. It was like some, some weird random objects in here. Um scrap of card and the toilet the wash basin like this was so random slightly damp ah uh, dude i don't know should i say piece of glass like it i don't think it is but i feel like do they want me to say that let me let me try it let me try it these shards of glass are pretty sharp prof you mean the you mean one of the larger ones could have made a makeshift makeshift weapon that's what i was thinking i Yes, the investigating officers had the same idea, so forensics studied every contender. Uh, 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 here comes a butt. But none of the shards match the size and shape of the victim's wound. I knew it! Oh my, what terrible bad luck! Keep looking, Lucy. What else could have been used? When is all this carry-on going to end? My poor heart surely cannot take much more. The police have already turned my home upside down and found no trace of a murder weapon. Surely you should be looking in the grounds where that murder and outlaw was caught instead. We've already completed a thorough search of the surrounding area. Then that wicked man must have just swallowed it, must he? What, stuck a knife down his throat? Give over! 
Now don't tell me you've never seen a sword swallower before. Perhaps we should take a step back and examine the facts we know about the murder weapon again. Lucy, there were no other obvious signs of physical trauma on the victim, correct? What does that tell you? He was stabbed in the back and has no other wounds, so... So that means there were no struggles. Totally out of the blue. Uh, yeah, there, were no, there was no sign of a struggle. No sign of a struggle. No self-defense wounds. If he's no other injuries, and he was stabbed in the back, I'd say he were caught totally unawares. I couldn't agree more. So, we can be fairly certain the victim were killed in a surprise attack. Oh, my poor Jack. That cowardly thief murdered him without even looking him in the eye. That man is beyond contempt. That would be nothing short of a miracle. After all, we're talking about a complete stranger entering the room. Hi, there's no way he wouldn't have put up a fight. That'd make no sense at all. <laughs> Poor Jack. He must have drifted off to sleep in front of the television. My poor honey did that a lot. That must be the reason why he did not notice that murderous villain breaking into the apartment. That's an interesting new piece of information. We will follow, file it as a witness statement if you don't mind. I'd say that's more or less all we can deduce about the circumstances of death at this stage. So, was that on purpose? I wasn't supposed to, like, find it right away. We had to find things that could have been a likely contender, but then they weren't. Hmm, okay. I don't know if it was on purpose or not, but we'll find out. We'll find out for ourselves. Alright. Great method of entry. So we're trying to work out how the killer got in the room, aren't we? That's right. Now, I am quite sure that could not be more plain. Why, you only need to look at that shattered glass to know to know that the outlaw came in through the window. And that's the only possible way in, is it? Isn't there some other way into the flat other than through the window? I'll have a look around and see what I can fi figure out, Prof. I keep stumbling. Help me, you guys. Help. I'm trying. I'm trying my best. All Switching between accents that's not natural to me is very difficult. <laughs> it's very difficult. So where else could someone have gotten in? Through the drain of the toilet. That's where. Uh, really just through the door. Front door and the shower door. Coming out of the shower door because it was you. You killed them. The closet? Were they hiding in the closet maybe? I don't know. Containing the victim's clothes appears to be in a jumble. This way in! They were hiding in here! You're supposed to be looking for other likely points of entry into the, into the flat, Lucy. You are not inspiring me with confidence in your abilities. Uh, don't worry! <laughs> we're only pulling your leg! <laughs> it's not like I was 100% serious and I really wanted you to praise me or something. Oh god. Oh, this is so stressful. Okay, I suppose it's the really obvious answer. I just, I just didn't think it would be so obvious, you know what I mean? If the door were locked and the key were inside the flat at the time, then... Then it's plain to see that the outlaw did not walk in through the front door, as I have already said. Which, I do declare, brings us back to the window. The murdering thief broke in through the window and stabbed my poor Jack in the back! I find that hard to believe. Lucy, what do you think? Uh, uh, uh what if the door weren't locked when he broke in? It, it could have been locked later on, no? My poor, simple little girl. Did you not notice the doors on these apartments all locked by themselves? Uh, then maybe someone let them in. How about that? I can assure you I had never set eyes on that man before. And neither had my husband. Why would Jack let a stranger into his home? Or are you implying that I let the outlaw inside myself? Let us not forget that any man entering the building would have had to pass the caretaker. Indeed. It seems unlikely that Nix could have gained entry to the flat through the front door. Oh, I think we should examine the window in more detail, Lucy. Hi, all right, Prof. I'll give it a good going over. Okay, I think that brings us to the end of today's episode. Holy cow, a lot of this investigating and all that stuff, it's, re it's really throwing me off. Really throwing me off with this case. Yeah, I just have like a slight inkling that it it's one of those those weapons that you can get rid of after a little bit, like the classic, yeah, if you have like an ice thing made of ice, it melts eventually. Um, I don't know what the card would have had to do with it, the wet card, but uh, the wet card plus the bloody towel just kind of makes me think that it's possible that they did something to do with an ice weapon. 
I don't know. Anyways, we'll find out next time. Join me then. This is Axis, over and out.